In this section, we will discuss techniques used to identify and visualize proteins. We'll break this section into two parts, as it's quite long. In part one, we will discuss the first three techniques, which include gel electrophoresis, isoelectric focusing, and two-dimensional gel electrophoresis. In part two, we'll discuss antibody-aided assays such as ELISA, Western blots, and immunohistochemistry. The first one we'll cover is gel electrophoresis, where samples of interest are moved through a porous gel matrix under an electrical current. There are two main types of gel that are used to separate macromolecules. The first is agarose, a long linear polysaccharide that is primarily isolated from seaweed. Whereas acrylamides are small amide containing compounds that can form crosslinks when exposed to a polymerizing agent, creating a porous acrylamide matrix. Both are used in biochemistry. Polyacrylamide gels are more often used for protein analysis, whereas agarose gels are more often used for DNA and RNA analysis. Agarose gels are usually good for resolving large molecules, which makes it a good medium for the large polymers of DNA. They are also easier to cast than polyacrylamide gels and are non-toxic. Macromolecules can also be recovered from this gel matrix and used in subsequent experiments. The resolution, though, is generally lower than that of acrylamide gels, and there is poor separation in lower molecular weight samples. Agarose is more expensive as well. Polyacrylamide gels have good resolving power and are the matrix of choice for protein analysis. It forms a stable cross-linked matrix. Care must be taken when using the unpolymerized monomers of acrylamide, especially in the solid form. It's a neurotoxin and can sublimate or go from a solid to a gaseous form directly, which makes inhaling it a real possibility. It is often sold in a liquid form to help avoid toxicity, although it can still cause loss of peripheral neuron function if the solution contacts the skin in repeated exposures. The gels are much more tedious to make as well and require a polymerizing agent to start the cross-linking reaction. Persulfate radicals are used as the polymerizing agent that initiates acrylamide cross-linking, shown here. This ends up forming a porous gel matrix that the protein molecules will move through. We will focus on the polyacrylamide gels for the remainder of the protein chapter, but we'll return to agarose gels when we talk more about DNA. Polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or PAGE, is undoubtedly one of the most widely used techniques to characterize complex protein mixtures. It's a fast, inexpensive method that only requires microgram quantities of protein. The gels are usually run in a vertical fashion with an upper and a lower buffer chamber where the buffer contacts the gel. An electrical current is applied to cause the movement of the proteins in the mixture. Proteins do not have a predictable structure as nucleic acids do, and thus their rates of migration are not similar to each other. Furthermore, they will not migrate when applying an electromotive force when the pH of the system is at the same pH as their isoelectric point. Page gels that are run in this fashion are called native page, as the proteins are still folded in their native state found in vivo. In this situation, proteins migrate according to the three factors, their charge, their size, and their shape. Alternatively, proteins may be denatured prior to electrophoresis. The most common way to denature the proteins is by adding a detergent, such as sodium dodecyl sulfate, or SDS. This not only denatures the protein, but it coats the protein with a negative charge. The blue sulfate head group is shown here.
This means that all of the proteins will run towards the positive lead when placed in an electric field. This type of electrophoresis is referred to as SDS page and it separates the proteins exclusively according to their molecular weight. A reducing agent that breaks disulfide bonds, such as dithiothreatol shown here, is often added to the loading buffer as well. This causes the free release of the cysteine groups within the protein and will fully denature and dissociate the protein into its monomer subunits. This helps to ensure that proteins will migrate through the gel in direct relation to their size rather than by their charge or shape. Notice that the DTT is oxidized in the process. Proteins that are separated on a polycrylamide gel can be detected by various methods. For instance, dyes like Kuomasi Blue and silver staining can be used to detect the proteins. Proteins can also be labeled with radioactive tags. Isoelectric focusing is a technique based on the movement of molecules in a pH gradient. The gels are poured such that the gel region near the anode is at a low pH and is acidic and near the cathode is a high pH or an alkaline pH. Between them lies a gradient between the two states. When the sample is loaded and the proteins are allowed to migrate, they will travel to the place in the gel where they reach their isoelectric point. Once they reach their isoelectric point, they will be neutral and they won't be attracted to either the positive or negative leads. SDS page and isoelectric focusing can be combined such that the protein mixtures can be separated in these two dimensions on a single gel. The first dimension is done by isoelectric focusing, where the proteins are maintained in their native shape and display their native isoelectric point. The sample is loaded in the lower left corner and separated in this direction first. The gel is then equilibrated in a solution that contains SDS and dithiothreatol to cause protein denaturation. The proteins are then run in the second direction, causing the denatured proteins to separate based on their size. In the next section, we'll see how antibodies can be used to help us detect proteins.